skip some slides because I'd like to have a uh, kind of more of a Q&A, but some stuff I don't want to skip over because it provides context for what I'm talking about. So um, we'll just go ahead and get started here real quick. Um, so let me share my wind lake story real quick. By the way, this is a picture I took after a windstorm that came through in early July of 2017. And uh, that storm, oh boy. We had a big, big wind. Didn't somebody, somebody like here might be able to remember? Didn't we have like a seventy mile an hour gust come through? Yeah. I know. Did, did we, Kim? We had a number of them and a couple of uh, small microbursts. Yeah. 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 Early July, I think it was like July 7 or July 8, 2017. So that's what about that's about when this uh, when I took this picture. It was the day after uh, the storm. Anyway, what happened was um, so the storm came through, and right away it knocked out. Right away it knocked out power um, to uh, most of my neighborhood. Now I didn't lose power, but I lost my uh, landline internet, television. And about 12 hours uh, after the storm came through, I lost uh, cell phone connectivity. Uh, the backup power at the cell site uh, by my house um, died. And uh, so I didn't have cell phone either. Uh, but I still wanted a way to communicate with friends and family who were outside of the storm's affected area. Um, and Using Windlink, I was able to do just that. I was able to send a couple emails uh, to my parents to let them know that I was okay, that their house was okay, and, every, and uh, I was safe. And I was also able to text uh, friends uh, down in uh, southern Michigan and northern Indiana, um, Caitlin being one of them, uh, to let them know that, uh, that I was okay as well, and not to text me because I wouldn't get the text message. So um, that's kind of my one link story and how it uh, uh, allowed me to communicate even though uh, normal infrastructure uh, went down. Uh, so what exactly is one link? Well, in, in short, it's sending an email over radio. That's pretty much uh, in a nutshell what it is. Um, you're able to use RF links uh, all around uh, the uh, world uh, to send an email, have that email be stored somewhere at a, um, at, a, uh, at, a, at a server to be retrieved at a later time or later date even uh, by the uh, recipient. And some of these stations are hybrid stations, meaning they don't need internet. Uh, they can store the message locally and then forward it to another hybrid station that's closer to the recipient of uh, your message. So it definitely uh, comes in handy here. And uh-oh, hopefully that, uh, let me turn the, my uh, brightness down here real quick. Okay, we're okay, yeah. Um, so Winlink, uh, I won't get into much of the history, but it's been around a while. Um, so I'm just going to fly through all this. Uh, we don't need the uh, history lesson. Uh, but uh, who uses Windlink? By the way, the photograph was from a, uh, well, back then it was the um, Ottawa County, um, oh gosh. Amateur Radio Auxiliary. It, yes, thank you, Caitlin. I was going to ask Phil. Because <laughs> it went out of my head. Because we haven't been Okara for a while now. So, um, but uh, this was in an exercise that we did um, back in, Phil, was that 2018? When we, uh, yeah, I think it was, it was in October. Yes. I think that was, yeah. Yeah, 2018, okay. Yep, 
So this was a, uh, uh, taken from an Okara exercise and we were doing some uh, uh, packet stuff um, out there. But uh, who uses uh, Winlink? Uh, well, emergency communications people, but also everyday, everyday hands. Uh, you don't have to be involved with um, Oxcom, um, which is auxiliary communications, or MCOM, emergency communications groups. You don't need to be involved uh, with those groups to utilize uh, Winlink. You can use it for personal stuff, um, which is uh, awesome, which is how I was able to send a quick email to family and friends to let them know, hey, I'm okay, don't text me or call me, because I won't get it. Um, a lot of boaters use Winlink um, when they're out at sea, and that is how they stay current on news, uh, what's going on in the world, um, when they might be uh, disconnected, when, um, as everybody knows, anything satellite related is costly and, ex and very expensive. Uh, getting better now, but uh, it's still not quite there for your everyday person. Uh, so mariners use this technology uh, to stay in touch with uh, uh, friends, family, maybe even race officials, as well as send position reports um, to uh, people following them back home. Adventurers, backpackers, um, there are videos of people that, are, that go hiking up in the mountains and they'll connect a, uh, a radio to a little Raspberry Pi and uh, they send Winlink email uh, back home from the uh, hiking trail um, or even base camp or whatever. So a um, lot of neat applications uh, that you can do, uh, use Winlink for. Uh, who can use Winlink? Any properly licensed damage radio operator. That's who can use uh, Winlink. Now for the VHF, uh, VHF side of Winlink, all you need is a technician license, nothing more, uh, besides the equipment. If you want to get into the HF Winlink stuff, like uh, some of the modes include VARA, um, ARDA, um, and I'm sure I'm missing some others in there. Um, if you want to get into those, you will need a general license or higher uh, to uh, access uh, uh, those portions uh, of the HF bands where Winlink uh, modes um, are used. Um, so, uh, what do you need to run Winlink? Well, you need a computer, you need a radio, uh, you need the Winlink Express uh, software, and you need a way to interface the radio with the computer. Uh, such, uh, such devices include uh, signal links, uh, they're very popular um, and affordable, uh, maybe around a hundred bucks. Um, and uh, just some of your basic costs to get up and running with Winlink. Um, you don't need anything expensive. In fact, since the last time I gave a presentation like this, um, um, a lot of people have made um, Linux Winlink programs that run on a Raspberry Pi. So you can use a single board computer, uh, such as a Raspberry Pi, uh, to get on the uh, uh, Winlink um, network. In fact, there's a really good YouTuber out there. Uh, his name is uh, Jason, KM4ACK. Uh, he makes a lot of good um, YouTube videos on uh, using Raspberry Pi within amateur radio, but he has dedicated some videos to using uh, the Winlink protocols on a Raspberry Pi. Again, his call sign is KM4ACK. Just search uh, his uh, uh, call sign on YouTube and you'll find all of his videos. Uh, just some things to keep in mind when you're uh, using uh, Winlink. Uh, your messages are not encrypted. Uh, that defeats the whole purpose of uh, the openness of amateur radio. Uh, not only that, it's against the law to have encrypted communications on am amateur radio frequencies. So your messages are not encrypted, they're just compressed. Anybody with the proper uh, decompression uh, software uh, can read your email. In fact, you can even go to the winlink.org website and you can read uh, people's messages. Having said that, when you're communicating with people, um, don't share any private, sensitive, confidential uh, information uh, with people uh, that you're sending messages to because it is not um, uh, it's not encrypted. It's, it's open for anybody to read. Um, 
keep your messages short and to the point. Um, I've been known to type paragraphs in Winlink, uh, and uh, it's um, it works. But obviously, the more the more content you have, the longer it's going to take for it to send. Because bear in mind, um, on VHF, uh, you're you're transmitting at tw uh, I'm sorry, on VHF, you're you're using 1200 baud. That's not exactly broadband lightning fast speeds that we're talking about. And on HF, you're 300 baud. So you're really slowed down there. So the more that you have in a message, the longer it's going to take for it to send. And I have tied up trying to send like really small pictures. I've tied up a Windling server, or a Windling gateway for about 15 minutes just trying to send a message. So just be uh, mindful of uh, uh, what you're sending. Um, because you can attach uh, files, uh, pictures, and whatnot in uh, uh, Winlink Express, uh, the software that you need um, for Winlink. Which brings to the next point, make sure that everything you say in your messages as well as the content uh, that you attach is amateur radio friendly. Um, so don't use you know foul language or anything like that in your messages. Um, and lastly, the big thing that I, I want to suggest is once you have a Winlink account set up, use it. If you don't use it within, uh, and it's been inactive for 400 days, they wipe it from their system. And if you go to use Winlink again after that 400 day, you're, it's going to be like, oh, you need to re-register. So it is important to, once you sign up for Winlink, you need to utilize it um, and make sure that uh, it's working. Um, and that your registration remains active. Now the good news is um, if right now you don't have a radio set up, um, you can use uh, Telnet. And the Winlink Express program, uh, there's an option for Telnet. Uh, you can click on Telnet and send a message um, via Telnet. That goes through the internet, that does not go through the radio, but that does count towards your 400 day quota. Uh, which is really cool. Um, so even if you don't have a radio set up right now, you can still get on board Windlink and uh, try it out and experiment with it uh, through the uh, internet. Um, kind of like what it looks like in setup. Um, so this is the main Windlink Express program uh, window. This is when you first open it, this is what you're going to see. Um, so it pretty much looks like a normal email program. You got your inbox, outbox, drafts, so on and so forth. Um, down at the bottom here, I have contact lists um, and address book and all that. So pretty much looks like a traditional um, uh, Windlink program. Uh, this is the setup screen, and I blacked out my personal information uh, for, to protect my identity, um, especially my uh, Windlink password. When you set up Winlink Express for the first time and send your first message, you're going to get an email from the Winlink system, uh, from the Winlink administration team, uh, with a uh, password. And once you get that, you will enter that password uh, right here. Uh, so let me make sure I got that right. Yep, you will enter your password uh, in there once you receive it. So this is just the main uh, setup screen, and in fact, when you open Winlink Express for the first time, I believe it will default you straight away to this screen. So you can enter in all the information uh, that you need. This is the composition window. So this is where uh, you, you write out your messages. And again, it's pretty typical for an email program. You got two, uh, subject, uh, CC and BCC and all that fun stuff. And of course, your your body and uh, attach it, attachments here. You can send attachments and so on and so forth. So um, not much of this uh, window uh, really needs to be explained. However, unlike traditional email, how this works is you'll type your messages. Uh, once your message is complete, how you want it, you're gonna post, there's a button up here, uh, and you're gonna click on post to outbox. And posting to outbox will then put the email, uh, let me back up here. It will put the email in your outbox, uh, which means it's ready to be sent out the next time you initiate a Winlink connection of any type. Um, so to, what you would do then is that email is waiting for you to send. You come up over here to session type, 
select the session that you would want uh, to send the message through, such as uh, uh, packet, Windlink packet, uh, there's HF Lara, um, there's um, RDoc, HF RDoc. Uh, there's, there's a plethora of modes uh, that you can uh, uh, send your uh, message through. Um, and then you click on open session, and once you do that, you are taken to this screen. This is a session window. And this is where uh, you uh, would set up your radio um, if uh, you indeed selected um, uh, packet uh, Winlink or Vara HF um, or RDoc. Uh, you would see a screen like this. Ta the Telnet session type it, uh, window is a little bit different. Uh, you don't have all this information. Uh, there's just a start and stop button and abort button. That's pretty much it because using Telnet connects to the internet. Uh, but this is um, this is the what it looks like if you're doing a. Um, I think I had this set as. Uh, yep, this is a pack. This is the packet uh, window uh, session window. So um, what you would do is you would type in the WinLink gateway that you would see. Um, I'm sorry, you would type in the WinLink gateway node um, that you want to send your message through. Um, and then once you have that information, and once you've also done the initial radio configuration, and I'll show all that in a little bit, um, you click start, and that's it. Give it a couple minutes, and your message will be sent. Uh, through the WinLink gateway to whomever you sent your message to. And the beauty is you can send WinLink email uh, messages to normal internet-based uh, email addresses. So you can send a WinLink message to um, xyz at gmail.com or whatever. So, um, and uh, people you send message, messages to can reply back uh, to you, which works great. So, yes. Uh, I don't know all of how this works, uh, but I sent an email from a internet-based email address, my my personal one, to my WinLink the other day. I hadn't apparently done that before, and WinLink, even with the special tag in the subject line, mm -hmm. which I assume you're getting to. Yes. Still made me confirm that I wanted to receive those on the radio side. Really? Yes. Okay. I'll, I will have to investigate that. It's been, a, it's been a few months since I've sent myself an email <laughs> uh, from one link to my uh, like Gmail address. So uh, that's good intel, Eric. Thank you. Um, and like Eric said, and I'll just point it out right now because I don't show it. If you are sending an email to a WinLink user uh, from an internet-based uh, email address, there's actually something special you have to put in the subject line, and I believe it is forward slash, forward slash, WL2K. Uh, that is the uh, syntax needed, and then you can proceed to write in your subject, um, however it is, um, or whatever it is you want to say. I believe that's just the first time. Just the first time? Okay. It used to be every time. So maybe that's changed as well. Um, anyway, this is the radio setup uh, window here. And uh, um, basically, how I have this set up is through um, um, my ICOM 9100. And I think that's how I have this uh, screenshot as. Let me just verify. Yes. So this is this is a radio I have, the ICOM IC9100, that has a built-in USB port for rig control and audio. Um, it's got a built-in sound card as well, which is great. Uh, which means I only have one cable going from the radio to the computer. I don't use a signal link, uh, and since ICOMs are a little more tricky uh, to get set up with WinLink. Um, and get up and running. Um, I can't. I, unfortunately, I can't walk everybody through each particular radio setup. Uh, but if you have any questions about radio setups, um, I'd be more than, than happy to answer your questions individually um, on uh, getting set up with uh, Winlink uh, for your particular radio. 
Uh, but uh, what you would need to do is, at least for this bottom section here, this is what's critical. And the good news is these are the default values. So when you install WinLink Express, all of this stuff here on the left-hand side, on the bottom half, should be filled in and ready to go for you guys. Um, but the big cru uh, crucial one that you want to make sure that's checked here, down at the very bottom, bottom where it says um, uh, enable iPad, uh, you want to make sure that is checked. That is important. So make sure that is checked. Once that's all done, you can click OK. Uh, and uh, the uh, session window will automatically uh, reboot and relaunch itself. Um, and your radio should uh, be able to um, respond. Uh, this graph graphic is a little out of date, and I'll explain in a little bit, but this is kind of how WinLink works. Um, so you have your, you know, you, you, your computer and radio here, um, and then these are your modes. Um, again, these are a little out of date because win more is no more. So, <laughs> ah, that, that was not my intention. Um, <laughs> uh, but, uh, so this is a little out of date. Uh, but uh, you get the general idea what's happening here. So you're sending a message through one of these modes, which then goes to um, a, uh, um, an RMS uh, gateway. Um, so that would be like, um, well, up at Holland Hospital, we have a Windlink gateway, KADAA-10. Um, so this would be KADAA-10. And then it will go out to the internet. And then this is where it's out of date here. These servers no longer exist. The WinLink people um, have changed over from regional-based servers to Amazon Cloud-based servers. Uh, so uh, basically, take, take this, merge them all together, and just write Amazon Cloud servers. Um, but it effectively does the same thing. And, there, and that is where they're stored, um, typically. And when somebody is, logs in and checks their account to see if they have any emails, you just reverse this, so top down. So the messages is here, the person connects, checks, and then downloads the uh, messages um, just like that. So just to give you an idea of how um, that works. This is, I believe, the WinLink gateway map. Yes, it is. So these are all the Windlink gateways in Michigan as of Sunday, this past Sunday. Um, I did update this uh, screen. As you can see in West Michigan here, we've got plenty of Windlink gateways on uh, Packet. These are Packet. Um, yeah. And yeah, they don't have a, I mean, they have a few in Detroit, but not a whole lot, um, it looks like. But, uh, yeah, um, Windlink in West Michigan is uh, alive and well, that's for sure. Um, so these are the Windlink uh, gateways, and we've got some, you know, in Northern Michigan, and there's one up in the UP there. In fact, I think there's a couple up in the UP, but not as much. This is the BBQ node list. I won't go into the technical aspect what, uh, what BBQ is. Um, I'm not exactly qualified to explain everything about BBQ, there's a couple people in here who are not only experts on BBQ, but they themselves run their own BBQ nodes. Um, looking at Dave. <laughs> um, and uh, they know more about this than I do, but these uh, green dots represent all of the BBQ nodes that can handle uh, Windlink uh, traffic. Uh, which is uh, really cool. And again, this is a uh, packet, uh, packet station. So um, as you can see, there's quite a few more people out there with BBQ nodes running uh, Winlink uh, gateway server. And uh, that's because BBQ, uh, you can run it on a Raspberry Pi. So if you're so inclined, if you want to run your own Winlink uh, gateway, um, all you need is uh, Raspberry Pi and the uh, BBQ software as well as a uh, radio interface uh, to the uh, Pi. So uh, plenty of opportunities there. Um, I don't really have a demo, but if you guys would like, I can hang out for like 15, 20 minutes or so and I can grab my Windows computer and just show you guys um, kind of like what WinLink 
looks like and, and walk through um, walk through it with you guys maybe on a more um, individual basis um, but uh, so I do apologize I don't really have a uh, full-blown like demo here the last time I gave this presentation I actually had a group of people here um, Eric I think you were one of them that was a lot of fun that was fun yep we had Aaron, Eric, Jared, myself, and I think there was somebody else too that I'm missing who brought in like antennas and computers. And we basically just in the room, not this room, uh, but at our old club meeting spot, uh, we had a uh, uh, fun time just showing off wind link to everybody. And that was really cool. So um, that's really all I have. I apologize, I know this was rushed, but I do want to give some time um, for people to ask uh, questions about WinLink, and I will do my best to answer them. Um, I'm always learning something new about WinLink, like tonight. Thank you, Eric. I don't um, know if everything was a, is valid exactly, but I've been experimenting. You know, and that's the thing, you've probably done more experimenting lately than I have, so. Um, but uh, we've got plenty of people in the club uh, who are very involved with WinLink, um, and, uh, some of those people might be able to answer your questions better than myself, but I am definitely able to answer uh, any questions uh, you might have, and uh, it's probably a good chance you guys can stump me. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, that's all I have. Um, so I'll take some uh, questions real quick if anybody has any. What are the benefits of the compression algorithm? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Eric. <laughs> Any questions? Sorry, I'm not wearing my glasses and I can't see you guys back there. So, if you have any questions, holler. Zach, your yes. recipient for a WinLink email does not have to have a WinLink account to receive it, do they? Say that again, Caitlin? Your recipient for your WinLink email does not have to have a WinLink account. Correct, right? correct. Yep, yeah. Any, you can send a, a WinLink message to any valid email address in the world. And they, the recipient does not need a WinLink account. Uh, they don't even need to be a ham radio operator. Um, but again, kind of going back, like just some caveats when you're sending a message, make sure that uh, the people that you're sending a uh, message to, um, make sure that the people that you're sending messages to, especially if they're not ham radio operators, make sure that they know that the message is not encrypted. It is out in the open for anybody to read, um, and uh, um, so make and make sure that you know they too keep the message uh, amateur radio friendly as well um, with words and uh, attachments. So, um, but that is a good question, Caitlin. Any others? <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Again, I apologize that I kind of just flew through this, but I wanted to take more time for questions. And um, just out of curiosity real quick, is there anybody that would like to see kind of on an individual basis, like the Windland program up and running and in action? Um, just, I can't unfortunately see you guys. So just, just say yes, if you're interested or something like that. If, you guys are interested. No? Okay. <laughs> well, okay. I think we're good then. Cool. All right. Awesome, you guys. Well, this is a short presentation, and again, I apologize I flew for it, uh, but I wanted to, um, people to um, ask questions, and uh, um, I'm always available. Um, my email address is good on qrz.com. So if you guys have a QRZ um, account, go ahead and look me up. Call sign is KE8BSM, Kilo Echo 8, Bravo Sierra Mike. And actually, my email address is pretty simple. It's my call sign at gmail.com. So feel free to ask me, uh, email me any questions you guys have. And um, I'd be more than happy to do more, about, like maybe have a separate uh, presentation on um, with a live demo of uh, WinLink as well at a future meeting. So uh, we'll see if there's some interest in there. But uh, I want to thank you guys for coming out tonight. This is awesome. So.
And with that, um, I think that's all I have. So I think we'll wrap it up unless anyone else has any questions. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, everybody. With that, I think we're good. We'll see you guys in a month. Thank you.